Okay, let's get going. Uh, so, Saba, just please introduce yourself and then uh, launch right into your presentation. Okay, sounds good. Hey, um, hello, everyone. Um, this is Saba, and I am a computer science researcher at Fermi National Lab. Um, so, along with many other projects I work on, so uh, there was uh, one uh, particular project we did using um, Science Gateway technology. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about um, how, what uh, technology we used and how we used it for our project. And then we used it in another different way for probably it was not intended to, um, to be used, but still we, uh, we went ahead and used it. And I will just share our experience and our findings uh, with you guys today. Um, so the title of my presentation is Scientific Workflows Using Science Gateway Technology. Um, it says scientific workflows, but uh, the use cases in this talk you will see are mostly from uh, cosmology, and I will be presenting two different studies we have uh, using the Science Gateway technology. Um, so this is a list of uh, the team members and collaborators who have contributed to the stuff I'm going to talk about at different stages. Um, we have uh, people from Fermilab, from Argonne, and from NERSC. Mm. So um, I am assuming that everybody here, um, since uh, they work with the gateway stuff, so they are familiar with Galaxy. Um, it's open web-based platform for data intensive biomedical research. I have just listed a few things uh, which were uh, interesting to us, and uh, these were the features that were matching with our problem requirements, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's why we chose Galaxy for our particular project. Um, so one thing is that uh, it uh, provides a list of tools and um, supports the data types necessary for biomedical research, um, and then uh, as users, you can add your own applications to it as well. And, uh, um, you, but you need to provide correct input and output data types so that when you connect your applications in the form of a workflow, um, so you don't um, make the wrong connections and uh, there is no type mismatch. And then Galaxy also provides you means to be deployed over various infrastructures so you can actually submit jobs to uh, big HPC deployments and uh, it has support for common schedulers. So this is just like a very brief and quick summary of uh, what Galaxy um, does and the features that are uh, of interest to us. So now how did we use Galaxy? Um, so we have actually two projects uh, for which um, we use Galaxy. So for the first project, we used it as a portal and we used a platform, we used uh, it's to build a platform for data analysis services for cosmological simulations. So the project was named as PDAX um, when it was initiated. Um, so again, um, uh, this, at this point, it was used just as a portal um, to provide different services and uh, analysis tasks. Um, in the second scenario, we actually tried to use Galaxy for development and use of analysis tools. So we uh, took an example, a use case from dark energy science collaboration workflow, and we implemented that using uh, Galaxy and evaluated Galaxy as a framework rather than um, as like a portal or some, something that's providing web services for you. Uh, I'm going to explain um, all the features and requirements one by one for... Uh, for uh, hi, Saba. Pardon me for this. Yes. Um, we have a couple of people who need to dial in. They're only on the AT conference, so let me give them a chance. Okay.
Marlon, do you need mm -hmm. the tool back as well, or no, just wait for a few minutes? Uh, no, I, I just needed to send a chat message uh, to a couple of people. Hopefully they get it. Okay, uh, go ahead and, uh, and please take up where you left off. Okay. Um, so the first project was a portal project, and the the motivation was that uh, our our goal was that we wanted to access and analyze data from cosmological simulations. And the challenge there was that there were extremely large size data sets, hundreds of terabytes, and then there was a diversity of tools um, that were uh, designed to access those data sets. So the idea was to make these. Uh, data sets as well as the tools available to the cosmology community. Um, so, so that's how we started off with the PDAX project. Um, the end product uh, or the major contributions uh, which we had were that we were successfully able to provide a list of uh, commonly used cosmological uh, analysis tools. Um, for all the uh, simulation data sets, and uh, we were able to uh, do the job submissions over HPC infrastructure, both at NERSC and Argonne. Um, we also were able to introduce new kind of data types for propagation of metadata through well-defined cosmological workflows. And then there were also a feature for adding um, the capability of uh, interactive uh, plotting uh, stuff to it. So these like are the summary of uh, what were the major contributions to this project. Um, so now I'm gonna go through uh, much a little bit more detail about each of the feature of uh, PDAX. Uh, so the first contribution was okay. So you so for Galaxy. Uh, when it comes as is, so it has a list of supported uh, tools uh, specific for biomedical research. So f in, to use it for the purpose of PDAX and for cosmology stuff, so we had to get rid of all the, um, the biomedical-related stuff, right? So now we have a set of new cosmology tools which are specifically designed to work on the simulation data we have. Um, and then there is a way that you can uh, contribute new tools to the system. So there are uh, well-defined steps, uh, which may be cumbersome at time, but most of the time, um, if you follow the steps and you know Galaxy in and out, so uh, you can easily do that. The third thing is um, that uh, the computationally intensive tools um, which need a lot of compute power, so they can be submitted to um, supercomputing resources, uh, whereas the less intensive tools, such as any kind of emulator or anything, so they can be executed on the same node that manages the galaxy. Um, the next contribution was that, um, if you remember when I was giving an overview of Galaxy, so I said that when users provide um, their own tools, so they need to provide associated data types for inputs and outputs so that they could be recorded in Galaxy and recognized in Galaxy for the correct um, connections of inputs and outputs when these things are connected in the form of a workflow. And so we introduced new data types for metadata propagation. And one of the things was that we wanted to make sure that when user creates a given data file so they can identify that what application created that file and what were the input configurations that were used to generate the file and um, anything that uh, is application specific. So we wanted to keep record of like this whole information and propagate it through the end uh, to the workflow. So we added um, data types to support that feature. Um, so another thing for PDAX was uh, the data access. So currently, PDAX uh, exposes a set of 37 cosmological models uh, known as the Coyote universe. And that was like the main idea, or one of the main ideas for PDAX was to make this, uh, these models and their um, snapshots available for the, for the research purposes. 
And so users uh, can also uh, upload their stuff um, to PDAX and uh, uh, using the services such as um, uh, using uh, Global Transfer. And um, for the job submission stuff, we relied on the, the new API stuff with our NERSC provides, and uh, same for the Argon job submission stuff. Um, so the last thing, um, which is another important feature of PDAX, is the plotting stuff. Um, we have support for JavaScript-based GNU plot, and we also have a web application framework for R, which is called as Shiny, so we have the support for a Shiny server. Um, so once your uh, um, analysis is done, so you can connect to the server in uh, through the interface, you can uh, plot multiple data sets, and it has all kinds of controls. So one I, Saba, I have a question. Um, yes. Maybe, or you say more about uh, the JavaScript-based new plot package that you're using, or uh, can you say that now? Um, what uh, particular thing you would want to know about? I was just curious what package this was. Um, so. For this particular feature, um, this was actually developed by our team member at Argon, so probably they would be more suitable uh, to talk about the GNU plot stuff. Um, so I'm not sure which uh, exact package did they use for it. Okay. Um, is that code available? Hi, Saba? Yes. Is that JavaScript GNU plot code available publicly? Um, it is in a repository, but I believe it's not uh, made public yet. Okay. Do you know if it will be? Uh, hopefully. After I think when I uh, wrap up this part, so probably you will you will know that uh, what's the future plan for this stuff, and uh, then we can actually follow up. But um, right now, in its current state, um, th there are there are plans to make this whole thing like as a production um, system, as well as to make the source code uh, publicly available. But I don't have a correct time frame for for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Um, this is uh, this is Abhi Maduri uh, from Argon. Um, so we we all work together on PDAX. Uh, so Tom Uram is a developer, uh, is a person who developed uh, the GNU plot. Uh, um, I believe uh, uh, Tom recompiled the GNU plot using uh, using a cross compiler, uh, using a JavaScript based compiler, so that uh, it could work in a browser. Um, so, um, so so that you know um, we we do want to sort of release everything once we stabilize. Uh, the source code into into open source so that uh, people can use that capability. But if you have use cases for for that blue plot, you know um, the Gateways community is, uh, community knows Tom Urong quite well. So you could you could reach out to him or or you could send uh, Saba or I an email and and we could uh, uh, you know we could make the connection. I think several of us will be very interested. Yes. Yep, sounds good. So I'm going to go back to mute because uh, cause I, I think I'll bring a lot of ambient noise if I'm not on mute. But I'll, I'll unmute myself uh, if, I, if I want to say something. Okay, um, I think we're good. Yeah, so that's it. Moving on to the next slide. So once we have implemented all the relevant tools that were needed and all the plotting stuff was in place, so this is a screenshot of when, um, when we were able to connect all these in a form of a workflow. So, so because we introduced the correct data type, so we were able to uh, actually make the right connection. So you can see um, actually, uh, when you try to connect um, the output of one tool to the input of the other tool, so if it's the right data type supported there, so you would see like a green color as an indication that yes, you can make that connection. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, so this is like just one particular use case uh, of the uh, workflow. And uh, there are two associated plots, and I believe these two plots were actually generated using the GNU plot. Um, 
so so this is like the status of um, the the PDAX project. Uh, I have this one slide about the future directions for that. Um, so from our side, the uh, Fermilab is not uh, uh, actively pursuing this project, but uh, team at Argon is continuing the development of PDAX. Um, so, so the upcoming things uh, are the production system for cosmology community and the uh, production deployments at Argonne and NERSC, and then also uh, deployment at uh, Oak Ridge Resources as well, use of Paraview for visualizations. Um, I'm sure there would be other plans for this project as well. Um, and uh, so, so that's uh, where this uh, project is uh, kind of uh, headed. And um, having said that, so for this particular project, um, now it's uh, being renamed and called as uh, Globus Galaxies. And um, we were able to actually use the right features for Galaxy system um, to provide um, uh, web services for uh, um, cosmology community and provide them with uh, and provide them access to uh, the cosmological simulation data and the associated analysis tools. Um, so, um, so from our side at Fermilab, we um, started to um, explore the use of Galaxy as a framework. And when I say as a framework, so there were many use cases uh, that we were talking to scientists, and there were specific needs of the use case. And when we list them down, so they were matching to a lot of features that Galaxy provides and some of the stuff we had already implemented in the context of PDAX. Um, so here is a list of uh, things that we were looking for, and we wanted to provide a system that does not require computing infrastructure expertise. So one thing we wanted was that uh, we can independent, we can integrate independently developed programs in the form <coughs> of a workflow, and then also allow the capability to run these programs on disparate computing facilities without understanding that uh, how to configure your system, for example, to run on NERSC or on HPC resources at Argon, or maybe the and the grid resources at Fermilab. So, um, so that was like one of the requirements. Then another thing was that in the development process, so you should have uh, the capability to allow uh, addition of new components as well as easily modify whatever is already there. And then propagate relevant metadata and correct input-output connections. Um, another, there were two more things that we were interested in was that uh, once you are developing these things, so developing different analysis tools, so you need to have um, useful debug information and error messages in case of failure. And the last thing is that uh, the sharing possibility for collaboration. And if you, if you consider Galaxy and the features it provides, so you can see that this list of seven matches uh, closely to what Galaxy can do for you. So, so we took a use case, a science use case uh, from Dark Energy Science Collaboration. And um, in this particular use case, um, I have boxed um, down the, the components of the use case that were using a similar resource. And then the the ovals they show uh, one step or one component of the flow. So this particular slide shows you actually the diversity of resources that are required for a particular science workflow, as well as diversity of applications that are involved in here. So for example, the first two uh, applications, so they are based on some project software from Cosmology uh, World. And uh, we uh, and uh, it was a, best, a suitable match to be run on uh, grid resources, so uh, that was one requirement. The next two things that are like the green bubbles, so they are uh, um, just purely user or scientist provided code, and then the last two are also scientist provided code, but they are using some external libraries. So. 
Um, some of these things were configured or they were needed to be run locally, the other ones uh, to be run on the NERSC resources and uh, some on the grid resources. Here I would like to mention one thing. So the last step we have is actually the Galaxy clustering analysis. And the interesting thing is that we are actually using Galaxy project for Galaxy analysis rather than, you know, the biomedical research. So, so we actually used it for the right purpose, I should say. Um, so, so here um, is like a, is a requirement. So now if you look at this use case and map it to the set of these requirements, so, so the next uh, uh, step for us was to that sure that we can maybe use uh, Galaxy, but just as a framework, as an environment where people can use it to make this development process and implement this use case. Um, there were a few things that, for example, the first thing is uh, when you are running a grid job and you run it on like 250 nodes and each node generates its output file. So the challenge for us was to, uh, so when we are running this thing through a web interface, so how to make um, a reasonable presentation of those output files. Um, so you, you don't want to see like 250 files appear per step um, because it's uh, very inconvenient. And then many other features, like if you want to look at a one particular file. So that was kind of a challenge and an indication that maybe uh, we need to work uh, on providing either more features through Galaxy or uh, maybe it might not be the very right tool um, for the task we wanted to do. But anyhow, we went ahead and we did the uh, we did we did implement this whole uh, workflow using Galaxy. Um, so now, uh, hey, since Saba, I'm, I yes, have a question. Yes. Uh, so for this for this uh, three step workflow or this three component uh, workflow, how long would a computation of the full thing typically take? Okay, so if you don't have wait times in uh, at Fermigrid and at NERSC, so it took like to, uh, 55 to 60 minutes, so it's like an hour long workflow. Why no wait times at NERSC? I'm sorry? Why did you have no wait times at NERSC? No, I'm saying assuming that, oh, okay. so that was like the best case scenario I'm giving you. And also how, um, how reliable did you find uh, running the workflows? What what percentage? There are always going to be you know problems. Uh, something fails. Some machines not responding the way you think. A file transfer didn't happen. Things like that. Did, how reliable did you find? Uh, and how were you able to handle any any failures? Um, so for this particular scenario, um, I would say the scale wasn't too big. So um, I did not see. Personally, that many, I mean, I did see failures when I was running, like, for example, one step through the command line, uh, but that was more or less like my debugging phase, right? But when I had configured them in the Galaxy, so I have seen failure, like, maybe a couple of times, um, but I will be honest, like, the, the useful, I wasn't able to get a whole lot of useful debug messages, uh, more or less through the interface. So I had to go back and to see that why the program failed. Um, so that was like one of the things that I also mentioned in my conclusion slide that uh, me, if there were like better um, error messages or uh, debug facilities through it, so that that would be great. Um, and uh, as far as like the file transfers were concerned, um, Uh, yeah, I, I I haven't seen much failures, at least at this small scale, and for this particular use case. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, uh, so in the next slide, I will show you just a quick overview of that. Um, if you have like a bunch of these applications, so how to make them work, um, uh, or how did we use it to add uh, to Galaxy Framework. Uh, it's true for both uh, the PDAX project as well as um, our this second uh, use case. Um, so, so 
Um, so in Galaxy, um, you need to have a tool description, which is an XML file, which is kind of like the front end uh, Galaxy user <coughs> interface. And at the back end, you will have the scientist provided code, uh, the application. Um, so in the best case scenario, that whatever you want to present on the user interface, so it's a perfect match to the application uh, that scientist has written and the command line input parameters. They have like direct one-to-one -one map. Um, so, so good. So you need only two pieces of one XML file, one application code, and you are good to go. But in some cases, um, you don't want to expose all the inputs to the user, so you need one, some kind of application wrapper to map input, maybe copy intermediate output files, and then run the user application. So you, you, you need some kind of glue in there. And then the third thing is that in most of the cases you have seen in like the different components, so they were running on different resources like grid resources and um, and, and nurse resources. So you need their job submission scripts as well in order to make that uh, work. So like this is like the whole workflow that if you want to if you want to um, add a new tool to the Galaxy interface. So when you put this whole thing together, um, so this is an example. Uh, it looks similar to what we have uh, for the PDAX case, and uh, it's uh, uh, one one thing that uh, we add we added here was to for the job status, for example. Um, so like NERSC provides um, you with the web interface. Same with the Fermi Grid. Uh, so we have local grid resources here, and uh, you have a web interface. You go there and monitor your application. So we added like one feature uh, here, so that once you have submitted the job, so you can just click here and look well, how the job is doing and stuff like that. Um, so that's uh, how the interface uh, of one single component looks like. Again, putting it all together. Um, the end result, uh, the interface looks similar to what we had for for the other project because this is again also a workflow, uh, and uh, um, and you can uh, and you can see like in the parentheses there are certain uh, types you you can see which are actually the data types that we have to invent, and um, and. Uh, made them recognize to Galaxy system so that we could actually make the right connections uh, through different, um, from the inputs to the outputs. And uh, the end product is, uh, is, yeah, you can, so we, we were able to, you know, implement this whole thing. But there were many things that we wanted to have, but again, the the purpose of Galaxy system is to, pro, you, to be used as a service uh, probably more than as a framework. So here is what I'm going to present in the conclusion slides that we, um, I presented two efforts using Science Gateways. It is actually the same uh, thing we use, uh, uh, the Galaxy project, one uh, as a portal for cosmology analysis and one as a framework that scientists can use so that they can focus on science issues and they don't have to learn the endless upstream stuff. So when I think about Galaxy for PDAX, so I see it as it matches closely to what PDAX requirements are. Users can interact with the portal, they can access data and tools, they can run those tools, uh, they can upload their more data sets, they can share results and the workflows. Um, with uh, more expertise, so users uh, can add new tools and input output data types to the system. Metadata is uh, propagated. So, like basically, all these uh, good features. So, we we were able to use it, and once the system is in pro goes to production, so people will be able to use uh, all these um, analysis tools on uh, the simulation data sets. But as far as Galaxy is concerned, for the framework stuff. So the end, the, the the end outcome, it looks good, but again, if you are giving it to you know to scientists and asking them to use as a framework, so adding a new tool requires expert knowledge of the Galaxy system and then interaction with the infrastructure. So the development cycle where you add the XML file, you add the wrapper code, you add the tools to it. So it's uh, it's not very straightforward. So if you 
for for the group, for example, we were interacting, so they were more interested in like you know the turnaround time of the whole development cycle. So it was like, yeah, but I can do this whole thing in like a Python script and put the things together. So 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 you get these kinds of responses as well, and then um, the debug facilities. So. Um, um, so, so yeah, it's, it was a bit challenging to get any useful messages uh, once things fail. So you may have to go back and debug the component and figure out that what exactly went wrong. Um, there was one more thing about um, the sophisticated data types and type hierarchies, which is, again, very challenging um, to implement in uh, Galaxy, the way things are. And then... Um, Integration with so we 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 did not get that far to integrate it with the file system or the storage system so that we could extract the metadata of the files and use that um, in a better way throughout the propagation of the inputs in addition to appending the configuration uh, parameters um, throughout the application lifecycle. So there were like. Um, uh, strengths and weaknesses, but again, in conclusion, um, Galaxy was uh, well suited uh, for the cases where um, you want users to use the system, not frequently, you know, update it and then bring the server down and uh, and do the uh, stuff. Um, so, so yeah, having said that, I'll just uh, take any questions if you have. Hi, it's Saba. Um, this is Mona. I was wondering about the sort of how long did it take and how big was the team for the two different projects, the one just the portal and the one that uses the framework to put everything together into a usable point? Um, so for the portal stuff, uh, actually I can I, uh, go to my first slide, uh, second slide. Um, so for the portal stuff uh, from Fermilab, uh, we were from the computing division, Jim and Mark were there, and then the team from Argon and NERSC. So we were the contributors for the PDAX project, which is now called as the Global Galaxies. And then for the second part, where we were working closely with the uh, Dark Energy Science Collaboration, so we were working from the cosmology people from our um, uh, from Fermilab, and then Scott and Steve were there. Uh, but that was uh, uh, that was worked on at Fermilab, the second part of the presentation. And do you think how long it took? Uh, how long it took? Uh, so PDEX has been going on for like almost two years. Ravi can correct me if I'm yeah, taken on that time. Yeah, that's correct. I, I also wanted to say one more thing. And so, you know, PDAX is not on um, global galaxies. You know, we we kind of generalized the the, the integration pieces uh, and called the whole thing as global galaxies. And PDAX is an implementation or a, a realization of it in cosmology use cases. And and we we have uh, sort of uh, a couple of people working part time uh, on the Argon side of the PDAX project. And I'm sorry, I missed how many years it took? Uh, it's going on. It's uh, the prototype phase uh, that we, we worked on went for, for six to eight months. And then um, uh, it's just really it's, uh, a year and a half. The project has been going on for, for two years now. And then the sorry the select uh, that was for the uh, the framework part or for the portal part. So that was uh, so what Ravi said. So that's for the portal. for the framework part. Um, efforts have been going on since um, like six months, six to eight months. So that's what the time frame has been for this project. But again, it's more like a demonstration uh, thing. It's not uh, production level stuff like PDAX and uh, Globus Galaxies is going to be. So that's kind of so the difference in here, too. Yeah. 
Also, I think somebody is not muted, so I, I, I kind of uh, having a hard time communicating. Mm -hmm. Should I, should I repeat, or did you understand what I said? I, I did, I did, thank you. Okay. And Saba, I have one more question. You said oh, that you guys did hold not... Hold on, hold on. Uh, can you, sorry, let me interrupt for a second. So every, if you're not asking a question, could you please mute, because it'll, there's a lot of background noise. Go ahead, Mona, please. Thank you. Um, Saba, uh, one last thing. You said that you guys did not get to the sort of the file management storage stuff, um, but Galaxy does support it or does not? Uh, we did not get that far, so I cannot make a comment that uh, uh, how it uh, does uh, handle this stuff. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, hi Saba, Josephine uh, from PSE. Uh, one question: Can you comment a little bit on the uh, the Galaxy database? You have um, many different users from many different domains. Uh, did you do any reorganization of the locations of the data and all that stuff? User access. Um. So for the framework part. Um, there were there, there it wasn't open to any other user right so it was me uh, implementing the whole thing so there was only a single user submitting through the to the instance i was running but for the pdex stuff um so we are hosting it at uh, at NERSC and at argon so we uh, I don't remember reorganizing any database stuff, but all the data files, they are hosted at uh, NERSC, and the PDAX instance is also running there. So, um, and uh, if you have a user quota on uh, any of the NERSC resources, so you can, um, you can run the things and you can, um, you can store the things there too. And again, I would want Ravi to intervene if he has any more comment on that part. Because yeah. I don't remember any reorganization of databases, um, the internal Galaxy database for data right. storage. So what we, did, what we did was when we integrated with NERSC identity management, um, so the Galaxy user became the NERSC user. And uh, thus, we were able to leverage NERSC uh, like uh, policies or the way they do quotas. Uh, so all the um, jobs that are run are counted towards the user's uh, computational hours quota. And the storage also likewise translated to their quota at NERSC. Does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Because within the Galaxy database itself, you have uh, you could you have the option to organize where the data files will be, user files would right. be. I wonder right. you know, right. if right. okay. No, you are talking about a different. So, so now I understand. So, so, so for cosmology, for cosmology data sets, so the simulation data sets that we have for for PDAX, so those are all loaded into. So they are available on the file system that uh, that Galaxy has access to. And they are loaded as a read-only by the administrator. So those are um, sort of handled at the administrator level. And um, the user-generated files are handled at the user level. OK. Uh, you mentioned, yes. you also mentioned a couple of terabytes of data that were being processed. Um, can you comment about that? Uh, what was the performance? Um, I cannot see the slide, so uh, I'm just <laughs> throwing out the questions as is. Okay. So um, the, the the data sets are not. Uh, I mean, they are they are uh, uh, so they are pre-computed or uh, they are pre-analyzed. Uh, the simulation data sets that are um, that are made available as read-only for for the users. So they are not being analyzed through PDAX. So, so PDAX is used for subsequent analysis of data sets that are already analyzed. I see. 
Is it possible to analyze it? I mean, using this framework. You mean reanalyze or regenerate the? the yeah, process? yeah, within the. No, that's not the goal. The goal is to um, kind of make the simulation data sets that require the supercomputing hours or the supercomputing resources to do to generate be available for subsequent downstream analysis. Okay. Uh, there, we don't have the analysis codes that, that allow you to re, to generate that data set. Okay, thank you. This, this is uh, Phil from PSC. I have a follow-up question. You, you mentioned that anything that the users create will be able to be created under their own directories then. Um, own storage, is that right? Right, so, so we had to sort of, uh, um, so once the job is run and the, and the data sets are generated, um, so the, the Galaxy user uh, trans, uh, copies or moves the data sets into the user's account uh, and then deletes it from the, from the use of the Galaxy uh, directory where Galaxy routinely stores the data sets so that they get, uh, they cannot get uh, Added or to the user's account. Ah, I see. So, so it's no longer at that point. Once they're done, those data, those user-generated data, are no yeah. longer tracked within the Galaxy system. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Because you know, to some extent, I mean, right now that feature is not uh, added for. A, so right now, that's the one thing that we're working on, because we wanted to sort of make sure that you know Galaxy users using uh, or generating data sets do count towards their storage allocation or NERF and not uh, get uh, added to the to the to the FedEx quota. Right. Yes. This is a. This is a I mean, this is an in interesting problem to to handle in Galaxy. So, um, so it's so it's running as a, a Galaxy user, but but you're able to charge to the user who's right. Uh, it's actually running. Because, right. Because that's. So we have used the NERSC, NERSC has this API called NUT that we integrated with. So NUT API allows you to do, uh, to kind of run the jobs as user, uh, as, um, and, then, and then use the allocation ID to kind of pop with NUT's uh, accounting system to count those, uh, those CPU hours. Right, right, but it still is running as the Galaxy user. No, no, it's running as a user who's, I who's uh, no, it's it, it's uh, the job is submitted as a user who uh, uh, okay, who has okay. a nurse allocation. I see. Okay, there, I get, so we have something a little bit different where it runs as the Galaxy user, but we're still able to identify which which account, which allocation it should be charged to. Uh, right, right. Uh, no, we so anyway. we did, we handled it the other way. You know, we kind of handled it uh, uh, okay. at the so at the at the portal logging. So when when user log logs into the FedEx portal, they log in using their nurse credentials. Okay, um, so that, that's very interesting. So so did you do you have any desire to keep the so right now at the end of whatever job there's there's a command that copies all those data out and and um, and moves them into the user's directory. Do you have any desire to be able to track that within the Galaxy system long term? Is that or are you happy with 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 uh, leaving it as it is? We, we we don't know yet. I mean, that's uh, that's something that that's why we we didn't kind of roll it out uh, into the PDAX, uh, uh okay. into the production. PDAX. I mean, we don't know what's the right thing to do there. Um, so that's something that requires a little bit more thought and and kind of design. Good. Thank you. Uh, so Ravi, uh, another question. Um, the, how many databases did you use? It, it, was it just one? We use two. Uh, one is a Postgres database that Galaxy uses, and then the and then uh, Saba's team has created a, a data type uh, that uses a SQLite database to track the metadata from cosmology simulations. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the second one. The first one is a Postgres. The second one is a what? The second one is SQLite. Um, ah, I see. We are using it uh, to propagate the metadata throughout. You know, when your workflow is running, so propagate metadata from one step to the other. So you're using two databases? Yeah. Working together, yes? Oh, uh, 
So the second one is basically for metadata tracking. I see. So it's just, you know, conceptually you can think about it as that it will have all the information regarding one particular run of a workflow. Why did you use SQLite um, for the second database? Oh, uh, uh, because it's just lightweight and easy to implement in this context. I see. So, yeah. Uh, because um, so we started it as, um, so what we needed was to have something which would keep track, like key value pairs. So, you know, we did not need any heavyweight or any, uh, any database stuff with like a lot of overheads or anything. So for okay, this thank you. purpose, yeah, that was good enough. So Saba, or uh, so okay, uh, you you mentioned that this uh, user data is residing in their user specific directories on the back end, and how are they trying to share this data at the end? If you know, or is is there? I mean, they have to again transfer it to some other place for sharing, or how do you enable so the, sharing? So, uh, yeah, so so let me let me get that. So to some extent, that's why you know there's really uh, it's a very early stage. You know, uh, so the sharing one one idea we had was that because there's a Globus endpoint running on that uh, machine, you could use the uh, Globus uh, sharing to share those data sets. But then it kind of breaks the the Galaxy sharing model um, because you know in Galaxy you can share everything, but then that assumes that all the data sets are owned by the Galaxy user. Um, so that's that's the big part of why this is a little bit difficult to kind of do uh, and kind of win it in both ways. Okay, makes sense. This is Don at NCAR. Um, very nice presentation, Saba. Thank you. Um, so when you chose Galaxy, and you said you started this about three years ago, did you look at other platforms? And this is not a critique of Galaxy. I'm just curious if you looked at other things or if you had a a, um, a development team that was already well immersed inside of Galaxy and it looked like it would work for your particular problem well. Okay, I can redirect uh, that question to yeah, yeah, sure. uh, again because you will know yeah, better so. about this stuff. So when we started it, I mean, to uh, so I, I think to to you, to, so it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, we had active development going on in the context of global genomics and the climate galaxy, where we were using Galaxy to do climate modeling and simulations and crop modeling. Uh, so there was some, uh, I mean, so we thought we could leverage uh, a lot of work or joint work, and it would sort of be uh, make sense for us in terms of resources. Uh, that are allocated uh, that we have at our disposal across multiple projects, so it would make it easy to kind of do this one time. Um, so I have a lot of experience with other workflow solutions. Uh, I've used Tavona, Vistrails, um, Swift. Uh, I mean, Swift is uh, parallel scripting language, but you could uh, and, and Pegasus and Wings um, as part of the CA Big project that I've uh, I've led uh, for workflows. Um, so I did uh, have a, a bit of experience using a lot of these workflow solutions, and one of the ideas behind FedEx and, and Global Genomics and other uh, other solutions, other projects that I have is that we want to sort of be able to run this uh, at production for users as a service versus a tool that users download. Um, so one of the big things that was going for Galaxy at that time was a web interface that allows you to uh, kind of make it available as a service that users interact using a browser without having to install anything on their local machine. So that was uh, sort of one um, one another uh, reason. Okay. And um, what are the language bindings? I mean, when you're trying to incorporate new tools and uh, new things inside of Galaxy, what are the language bindings? What do you face there uh, in terms of the, you know, extending it, making it? Um, Right, so the yeah. Galaxy itself is written in Python, uh, but um, because it supports Rama, uh, which is a uh, like an API to to submit jobs to a cluster. So pretty much anything you can run on command line or an executable. You can uh, 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 you can uh, you can run in Galaxy. 
So the, but, uh, it's pretty uh, agnostic to the language that, uh, that the executable is implemented in. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, I'm hogging everything, but this is my last question, is that um, are, are you thinking some about uh, deeper integration um, with Galaxy and Globus sharing? Because you, you said you, you know, had a, a Globus endpoint yeah, on there, yeah. and that was one way to, to share on yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. That that's uh, that was one of the uh, sort of at least one of the ideas that we are pursuing right now. To um, so there's also Globus uh, publication service we we are just releasing. To some extent, if the if the workflow that the user has run has uh, is ready for the user to be shared across multiple or community, and have it appear in a publication or or have it linked to a publication then we wanted to sort of integrate with Globus publication and sharing so that you could create a DOI um, for, for the workflow and, and, and all the subsequent uh, data results that you would want to preserve or have it available. Um, so that, that's definitely the, the sort of the work that, uh, the direction that we are taking uh, for sharing. Okay, Th thanks for uh, good answers to three, those three questions. <laughs> Well, thank you for asking me. Other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, Josephine, uh, did, did you encounter an instance where you wanted to support several versions of a particular software that's um, very important to a particular workflow? Uh, do you have, because Galaxy is pretty, uh, pretty static. Uh, so we did implement that. Uh, I mean, to some extent, we made made each version of the tool into a into a separate individual tool, uh, so that you know, you know, from Galaxy's perspective, they're just different tools. Um, and the fact that they're different versions of the same tool is something that you glean from from looking at the metadata of the tool when you when you select it. So the different versions was hard coded into Galaxy. That's what you're saying, right? So, the the description of the tool uh, has a a yeah, you're right. So has a has a field for version for capturing the version of the tool. Yeah. But they are uh, hard coded to the particular executable or the version of the executable that you're running or the tool is running. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, another thing. Um, I must have missed some earlier comments. The job submission, so this is capable for local submission as well as remote submission to the different compute systems? Um, you mean local? So far, uh, okay. Uh, so far, the PDAX ends thing on NERSC, so you can submit to, for example, if you have configured to submit to Carver, so that's what you can do. And there are some pieces of jobs that uh, you don't need to do the the batch submission, so they, they run locally. Um, I believe it's the same case for the Argon stuff as well. Um, and uh, for the framework part, uh, again, there were tools that were configured to run on a particular resource. So the remote job submission was done through what method? Is this a CLI or the Pulsar? Did so you use any of those? NERSC, so on the NERSC, it's using it's, it's, not, it's using Newt API and uh, um, and. Uh, Galaxy itself supports something called Drama, D-R-M-M-M-A-A, which is a is handed to submit remote jobs uh, to a cluster. So um, you can you can you can pretty much have it uh, run submit to SunGrid Engine or PBS or Open PBS, Moab, Moi, Torque, you know, you name it. Okay. Last call for questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Saba. And you sent me a PDF of your slides. Do you mind if I send those out?
Uh, that's fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then I'll uh, uh, also send a note out. Uh, well, actually, I, I sent a note earlier um, on the announcement this morning. So we're collecting all of these presentations on one one place, and so they're in YouTube as well. Uh, and so the the link on the Exceed site is basically just embedded uh, YouTube players. So those should be available uh, sometime here uh, early next week. That sounds good. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.